Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Competent Women Leaders Show. I have a very important guest for you, and her name is Lilati Mitchell. Welcome, Lilati. Hi. Thanks for having Lilati. me. You're welcome. Lilati is a professional um, in quality and patient safety and risk management in long-term care. And we met together, Lilati, about a year ago at the Healthcare Business Women Virtual event. Can you believe and it's I had been a year? This, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe it's been a year. You know, and I was really focused in trying to create, I have diagnostic thinking groups, and I wanted one specifically to help me to learn as a person who doesn't look like the black woman or a woman of color, how can I learn how to be more sensitive and how can I learn to be more attuned to what are the needs of my fellow women? And I believe that all women are here to be able to create the change that the world needs us to be. And so it was so wonderful to have you in that group. And I wanna talk a little bit about you and your journey and how you stepped into your confidence. So what would you like the audience to know about you, Lilati? Sure. Um... I like just a quick introduce a quick introduction of who I am. I'm a, I call myself a God fearing wife, mom, mm -hmm. daughter, sister, um, and I always love to end that with and you know friend um, and boss lady. So um, it, it's <laughs> been a journey for myself to kind of get myself into that position, um, but I'm very proud to be there. And um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I love it. I love having you on the show too. And I want to thank you for your time. So I've got a couple of questions for you. Uh, yeah. The first one is what are the biggest challenges as a leader that you found for yourself? Yeah. Um, first I would start with, um, it's, it's been a few years, but really embodying the fact that I am a leader, right? Um, I, I um, didn't always have that title right didn't always have that team people re um, reporting to me directly and so sometimes that in and of itself um, lends people to feel that they are not a leader um, which which in fact is not necessarily the case and so i think for me um, all of the other stuff came afterwards when i got the confidence and the ability to, to see my own leadership potential um, and to demonstrate that in the organization that i was at at the time and since then, um, I actually have been in roles, um, like director roles, really leading the charge for various organizations in quality and, and patient safety and risk. And um, it's been a joy. And so I think for me, the first challenge was being able to identify that I am a leader. <laughs> um, some other challenges are really um, as, as a leader, uh, I, listening right um to all of the voices and making sure that you are getting everyone's point of view um because i think that makes for a better leader uh the ability to kind of pull together everyone's ideas and and um assist them in coming up with the best outcome for the situation and so um as i've been improving in my own leadership um i've been kind of fortunate to be able to engage with individuals to have those people who are more quiet and silent in the room actually have a voice. And so, although a challenge, I think initially something that I'm I'm learning to and making sure that I'm, I'm teasing out with those individuals that might be in a room with me or virtually um, and ensuring that they have a voice and I can, you know, be that sounding board for him or her, for them. Mm, great points. Thank you, Lilati. You said something that's really important, and that's belief in yourself, right? And having faith in yourself. And at what point was an aha moment for you that's like, get out of my head, quit self-sabotaging myself and step into what I believe for myself? How did you overcome that? Yeah, um, that's a good question. And I, um, I wish I could say, that I just woke up one day and I was like, oh my God, great. Um, it actually didn't demonstrate itself in that way. Um, I think for me, um, just a little bit of background, I, I do have a number of certifications and degrees. And so I actually mm -hmm. have three masters. Um, I have a, you know, a bachelor's in community health, health education. I also have a degree in nursing. And so a lot of school and, um, and was one of those people who felt like I needed to continue to attain to be able to to use that to get me where I needed to go. Mm -hmm. But 
um, years ago, actually, I want to say I got, uh, someone reached out to me, um, for a position for a job. Um, and it was like a LinkedIn, uh, you know, I don't know. I have like a little bit of information about myself out there and someone reached out to me and was blown away. And they're like, oh my gosh, your background, what you've done, what you, you know, and I started to realize, I was like, is it, it really like it, it is like, you're impressed by that. And, um, yes. uh, and they were, and so I think, Absolutely. yeah, for me, that really was my eye opening that wait, I, I am someone who has, I've done those things, right. I've, I've gotten myself to be an expert in my field and really the people out there are not going to necessarily see me as an expert if I don't myself see myself as an expert. So I, I, um, I actually think someone else brought it to my attention. And um, as I started to embody that more though myself and kind of speak up, you know, to people that I, this is, this is the area of expertise that I know, I know knowledge about it. Um, and if I don't know, I know where to find it. Um, and so that in and of itself started for me to almost magnetize and bring other individuals to me who would again, um, you know, demonstrate or, or describe me as being a leader or in this field. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard you say that I, I work with a lot of women globally, and this is a big issue it's being able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am worthy. I am great. I can do this. And it's this confidence thing that causes these shifts of feeling like you either are not worthy, you don't have enough. Mm -hmm. And I love that you shared that story that somebody actually reminded you of that. So I love that. Thank you so much. And I certainly think you're a rock star. <laughs> I thought this is the first time I met you for sure. Um, I'd love to ask you the next question, you know, sure. things that, um, having a system that supports kind of that development of competent leaders. And I asked you to join a diagnostic thinking group with other women, um, specifically to help women that don't look like each other, like for me looking like the group, right? So it was a woman of color group. And the whole, whole focus of this was to help me to see what I can't see making sure that I'm sensitive to what I can do to support my sisters all over the world, regardless of what we look like. And I'd love to know some of your key takeaways, you know, out of that experience. Um, and I'd love to just hear your thoughts. Yeah. Um, great question. So um, I did have the opportunity to join that group with a number of wonderful women who some looked like me um, and some looked different than me, but we all had similar viewpoints. And I would say um, some of us having similar stru struggles or challenges in the work in the workplace. And so um, one of the key takeaways for me was the opportunity to be open and vulnerable. I actually think that um, now that I'm thinking about it, I think that also provided me the ability to be more open with people whom, even in my job circle, right, like my, my colleagues, um, as well as those people who report to me um, about kind of, I don't want to say my struggles, but my thoughts, right, and where I am. And so one of the things that I, I say that I think was key in um, being in that diagnostic thinking group really was around being vulnerable. So um, I didn't know any of the women in the group. Um, we did later kind of get to know each other and we shared a little bit about ourselves. Um, but we were really kind of targeting things that we thought were very pressing and challenging um, that we, something that we wanted to overcome. And so imagine bringing that to a group of, of people that you don't know and being vulnerable and open to having them kind of, I don't want to say necessarily probe, but inquire, you know, and make you really think about the area that's challenging you. And so for me, it was being vulnerable, um, but all the growth that I got in the vulnerability. And so um, I think that was definitely one thing. And um, it's something that I've kind of held on to. There's, there's some, um, there's growth and there's, um, there's a lot that you can gain sometimes in being a little bit more vulnerable, you know, and having people mm -hmm. kind of really see you as a person, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, this, this figure who's supposed to be confident all the time and their leader, but to know that sometimes you're like, I don't really know that I don't really know the best way to handle this situation, but we're going to figure it out. 
but um, I don't know necessarily everything all the time. So, so there's that. Um, the other thing that, um, that I gathered, and it could very well be because you did bring together um, a, a group of women who, um, you know, kind of might have had similar issues to myself. So I kind of saw myself in, in a lot of the women's shares. And so um, I was able to really listen in and I wasn't taking it from a point of view where I was like, oh, well, what would I do? But more like, what do I think would be ideal for, for, for her? Mm -hmm. in that situation. But then later, looking back at it saying, well, I've been in a very similar situation. And I didn't even think to take my own advice or even <laughs> think to through and see if I could figure this out on my own. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. so that was an, uh, an, an eye opening and awakening for me as well to, you know, to, to take the opportunity sometimes to just jot down what it is that you're um, kind of going through and, and what, what it really is that you're trying to accomplish. I think that was a big thing for this group. If you remember, we were always like, well, yes. what is, what's at the heart of what we really want and yeah. um, being able to tease that out and, um, and then setting focus on that, um, as opposed to all of the things around it that we think we want, right. But they're not really what we're trying to get at. So, um, so yeah, that was beautifully said. And, you know, it was a journey for me too, right? Because I had to learn a couple of things when I started the group, right? Yeah. Some of the things that I was saying was certainly very offensive, you know, some ways of, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. That's not how I meant that. And I do think the world is, has a lot of that in it, yeah. you know, and getting to the heart of the situation for women based on the fact that we really do care about each other. It's really about the care and the love for each other, wanting to help people move forward and be successful is really what the group is really about. But getting to the heart of the matter, it is so hard to do that. We can't do it on our own. Yeah. I couldn't do things on my own. So that's why I said, can you ladies help me get to where I need to be? And I yeah. still have things that I can change and grow, but where can I go where I can help other women around the world see us for who we are. And that was what came out of that group. See me for who I am. Because when I asked everybody, what would you like the world to know? It's see me for who I am. I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. You know, so I want to thank you for that um, and all those insights. And I loved how you said it's kind of a journey because when you first jump in, you're kind of like, mm, I don't know about this. <laughs> Everybody's like, mm, I'm just not sure about this. But when right. you create a safe space for people and people start to open up that, you know, no one's there to judge anyone. No one's there to push anybody's agenda or, you know, cause any sort of um, have people feel bad for how they think or maybe some things that you've done. Right. Um, and just hold a space for success for everybody. I, I forever grateful for this group because it helped mold me. So and you were obviously a big part of that. Well, I can't thank you. Enough. It. What would you say to somebody who is thinking about a diagnostic thinking group? What would you tell them? Uh, jump in. Um, I, um, I I think I might have had so some of the hesitations that I had initially were, oh, I don't have time because <laughs> women <laughs> leaders just don't have time. We've got so much going on. Um, but uh, first of all, you were very open and willing to kind of shift things around for, for our group, which was very helpful. So we met in the evening um, and we made time. And the group was one in which, I mean, you remember, I, sometimes my kids would be in the background <laughs> um, or other people's kids. Yeah. And it was really... <laughs> Yeah, it was really open and just inviting. And so all of those things that become the issues as to the reasons why you can't do it, yeah. really just 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 do it. Um, and so I think that was for me for the, the first thing, definitely. And then um, being before you start the group, really thinking about what it is, like what has been keeping you up at night, you know, and mm -hmm. being willing to take that to the group and being able, being willing to, to chisel through whatever that problem might be or that mm -hmm. issue or that challenging. So being willing to, to bring in something meaty, you know, juicy, as opposed to like, Meh, it's a surface level, <laughs> you know, I don't know these people, but um, yeah. the, what you get from it is worth it if you actually bring something that's meaningful. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, so when you were all done, 
What did you feel like when you're done? Because there's so much apprehension on the front end for most people. What was yeah. it like when you were done when people were starting to share, you know, their ideas and some strategies and, and their experiences? Most definitely. Um, definitely an area of comfort, right? So you definitely got to, you structured it in a way where um, we we kind of almost got comfortable with each other. You know, you, it's not something that you go in and you're like, you know, it, it's not like we were doing icebreakers really, you know, but it was like we did, we did things. There were things that were structured um, throughout the, especially like the first session um, that kind of really got us to kind of just get comfortable around each other. Mm -hmm. um, and be willing to be vulnerable. So I think um, kind of towards the end, you definitely had a level of comfort that you might not have had going in, being able to be open and to share. There was also like a willingness to contribute. So mm -hmm. um, it's like, um, it, again, another um, great part of the structure is in the way that you have the sessions go, but um, being open to contribute to other people right um mm -hmm. that yeah. and and you learn when you're able to contribute to other people so for me it was it was being able to to do that towards the end and getting better at it um if you remember we always wanted to contribute like right away we're like i think that you should and you're like wait we're not ready for that and we're like oh okay um <laughs> yeah i have to play and judge we judy <laughs> It's always hard for people when I have to interrupt and say, no, we're not yeah. there. We're not there, <laughs> not yet. Not there yet. yet. <laughs> um, yeah. And then um, I, I would say that at the time, the issue that I think I brought to the group was pressing. Um, but really when we like kind of got deep into it, it really provided me what I needed to make the decision on whether or not I was, it was time for me to shift. Yes. And um, as you know, I ultimately did make a shift and it was for the betterment of, um, I think the organization and for me, you know, um, and, and I was pleased to be able to do that and to do it and not feel bad about it, right? So it's one thing to be like, I'm gonna shift, I'm gonna change jobs, I'm gonna do whatever, I'm gonna change my career. Um, and then you've got all this regret. Um, and so having the ability to kind of chip through and really uncover what I was getting at <laughs> um, under the surface allowed me to be able to, to make moves with no regrets. I love that, I love that. Well, I am so proud of you and I wanna thank, thank you. you for participating. You. We will be friends for life. I always <laughs> watch to see where my women go. Um, congratulations yeah, on your new Thanks. role. And I so appreciate what I learned from you and this group and women are changing the world. And so I wanna thank you, Lolati Mitchell for being a part of that change and being on my journey as well. So I wish you well and thank you so much. Of course, have the, all the best. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.